Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, I'm gonna show you the best conditioning session to make the most out of your time if you have five minutes, 15 minutes, or 50 minutes to train. I personally have built elite conditioning that allows me to run a 520 mile, race Ironmans, and sprint up and down the basketball court for eight games of basketball without gassing out. Not only that, but I've also coached hundreds of athletes over the past 10 years ranging from youth athletes to professional endurance athletes and even NBA and NFL athletes to develop elite conditioning. So I'm gonna condense all of those lessons that I've learned into these three conditioning sessions that you can use to improve your conditioning. Let's go and dive right into it. Okay, so let's start with how to build top conditioning if you only have five minutes to train. And for this, there's no better method than the conditioning protocol called Tabata. Tabata was originally developed in the 1990s by Dr. Izumi Tabata and a team of researchers in Japan. This study was done with Olympic speed skaters and what they found was pretty incredible. Repeating intervals of 20 seconds on, 10 seconds of rest, eight times led to significant improvements in aerobic and anaerobic capacity in just four minutes. In fact, the improvements to VO2 max were comparable to much longer endurance workouts. But here's the catch. The original protocol wasn't just any exercise done for 20 seconds. It was performed on a stationary bike at 170% of VO2 max, basically an all out sprint. And these were Olympic speed skaters who were able to push themselves really hard. So here's how you can actually implement Tabata today the right way. First, pick a movement that allows you to go all out without breaking your form. Some examples include an assault bike, a rower, heavy kettlebell swings, sled push with moderate resistance and max speed, or even jump squats, versa climber, or incline sprints. Each of these exercises actually allows you to hit true max intensity. Once you pick your exercise, set a timer for eight rounds of 20 seconds max effort, 10 seconds complete rest. The key is intensity. It should feel like a 10 out of 10 effort. And frankly, there are some exercises that just should not be used because they don't allow you to push to that true 10 out of 10 effort. Box jumps and burpees, for example, just aren't hard enough to truly max out for 20 seconds. Even if you go as fast as you can with those exercises, you can't get close to 170% of VO2 max like you can can with bike sprints or an incline sprint. Also, lifting weights with squats, lunges, or deadlifts is really not ideal either. That's because your muscles are gonna fail before you can actually put much stress on your oxidative system. And for this conditioning to be effective, we need to be breathing really hard, more so than feeling one muscle group burning out. So this is not your casual HIIT workout. If you're doing it the right way, by round four and five, you should seriously be questioning your life choices. So if you only have five minutes to train and you want the best conditioning conditioning bang for your buck, the Tabata is really tough to beat. But what if you have 15 minutes to train? If you've got a little bit more time around 15 minutes, the best approach isn't to just do longer or more Tabata. Instead, this is where anaerobic power intervals really shine. This style of training helps you build your engine, improving your ability to sustain repeated high outputs with structured work to rest ratios, targeting your VO2 max system. So here's the protocol. 40 seconds of hard effort at a seven to eight out of 10 intensity intensity and 20 seconds complete rest. You want to repeat this four times, rest for one minute. That right there is five minutes of work. You're going to do that three times with three different exercises. And I would really recommend choosing cyclical exercises, assault bike, rower, ski erg, sled push, battle ropes, strides running at 80 to 90% of your max speed, or even functional work like throwing a sandbag over your shoulder, or in this case, even burpees could work. That's because in 40 seconds, you can get a really solid workload out of any of these exercises. And I do recommend doing three different movements so that way you don't get an overuse injury from any one movement done too many times in a row. Now, here's why this conditioning protocol works. This hits the sweet spot where intervals are long enough to challenge your aerobic power system, but not so long that you just fall into steady state endurance. It trains your heart to pump more efficiently. This improves what we call recovery capacity, and it's really great for athletes who wanna be able to sprint and recover quickly. That said, there are some key mistakes to avoid with this method. Number one is going too easy on the work interval. It should be uncomfortable, but sustainable for that 40 seconds. And then number two is choosing technical exercises like kettlebell snatches or barbell lifts. These don't really fit that well here. It's typically better to stick to simple cyclical movements where you can push yourself without worrying about technical breakdown. And then one pro tip, if you are using this to train as an athlete, like a basketball player, football player, soccer player, for 
for example, you can use field or court based drills like shuttle runs or even sports specific drills. Just make sure that they're a drill that you could push hard for 40 seconds and then take 20 seconds of true full recovery. So if you have 15 minutes to build conditioning, this is a really great protocol to use. Okay, but now what if you have a full 50 minutes to dedicate to conditioning? This gives you the opportunity to train multiple energy systems strategically, combining aerobic base development with anaerobic intervals. This is the type of session that actually helps you build long-term capacity. So here's how I would structure an efficient 50 minute conditioning session. First, start with 30 minutes of simple aerobic base work. This is just steady state zone two cardio at a heart rate of approximately 60 to 70% of your maximum. So for example, my max heart rate is 190. So I multiply that by 70% and I typically target 133 beats per minute for my zone two cardio. For this zone two cardio, you can choose any exercise that allows you to work at that steady pace for 30 minutes running, rower, skier, swimming, whatever you wanna get better at. The goal here is just 30 minutes at that steady aerobic pace to build your aerobic base. It's actually important to do some of your conditioning at a lower intensity because this is the intensity that drives adaptations like mitochondrial density, improved capillarization, improved fat utilization, and a lot of aerobic enzyme upregulation. It's all a really fancy way of saying that training at an aerobic intensity improves your aerobic system. Now, once you hit that 30 minute mark, we're gonna shift and also get some anaerobic work in this session. Specifically, we're gonna do anaerobic power intervals for the next 20 minutes. This is gonna involve 30 second high intensity efforts on 90 seconds of active recovery. And you're simply gonna repeat that for 10 rounds. Again, there are a lot of good choices for this, bike, rower, sled push, shuttle runs, anything that allows you to push yourself hard for that 30 second interval and then hit a recovery pace for that 90 second rest. These intervals help improve your anaerobic system and your ability to again, repeat hard efforts without fatigue. Here's why this aerobic and anaerobic mixed structure really works well. A strong aerobic foundation supports recovery and endurance and general cardiovascular health as well. Combined with some anaerobic efforts, this gives you the ability to repeat high power efforts. And this one session is actually a really good representation of how you can think about structuring a full week of conditioning. If you're really limited on time and you have just one or two really short conditioning sessions, then just go hard with intervals and you're gonna get the most that you can out of a really short time period. But let's say for example, that you have more time to train. Ramping up just high intensity intervals four or five times a week can really lead to burnout and really tax your nervous system. Also, you're only really training your anaerobic system, not your aerobic system. So don't get me wrong, anaerobic or high intensity intervals are a really great stimulus, one to three short sessions per week. But if you're doing conditioning four to five times per week, or if you have longer training sessions, you'll wanna focus more on that aerobic low intensity conditioning. And then one specific recommendation that I typically give is that once you get to three hours or more conditioning per week, that's when you really wanna follow the 80-20 principle, where 80% of your conditioning volume is aerobic and 20% is higher intensity. So for example, that could look like four low intensity aerobic sessions and one high intensity session or three aerobic sessions and two mixed aerobic slash anaerobic sessions. Basically what I'm saying is that if you have a very short period of time to train just once or twice or three times a week, focus on those anaerobic hard efforts. But as your training volume increases, you have to put more of a focus on aerobic efforts to continue to build your conditioning and also recover well between training sessions. This is a good time to mention that we do have training programs available at themovementsystem.com and I'll link them in the description below. Even our 12 week strength and hypertrophy program includes conditioning work because I believe that it should be a part of all training programs. And if you want what I consider the ultimate program, check out our hybrid athlete program. It's a program that I use personally to be able to dunk, win endurance races, and get stronger. I'll leave a link in the description below to a seven day free trial. All right, I hope you learned something today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you next one. Thanks.